back is the Norman invasion, 1066. Now the Normans invaded and they've tried to consolidate power over the whole of England. To consolidate power, one approach that they took was through the standardization of law. Legal disputes were resolved mostly locally. They were resolved locally by various tribes, various elders, various groups. Local custom was the deciding factor. So it wasn't simply some form of uh, autocratic or authoritarian power by an elder. No, what the elders would do would be simply to apply local custom. And local custom, as many of you are coming from different parts of the world know, local custom varies. And it varies from place to place for a variety of reasons, context and circumstance being the most important ones. Law in England at the time of the invasion was fragmented. But it wasn't represented in that way at the time. It wasn't though as we spoke of law in England and said, oh, too bad, what a shame, our law is fragmented. No, people didn't self-identify in that way as being English. They were tied to a particular tribe, and within that tribe, there were certain norms and customs. There was a culture. Therefore, there was a legal system. This, however, did dilute the power of the monarchy because rules would be applied differently in different parts of the island. So what the Normans sought to do was to standardize the laws and they developed the body of judge clerics. So they took some clerics from within the Roman Catholic Church and they trained them as judges so as to carry out or as to implement the law, to interpret the law in a unified fashion. Well, obviously, because these were Roman Catholic clerics, then the laws of England around that time were heavily influenced by Christianity. And because common law is a system that builds upon precedent, builds upon the past, we see that through the progression of common law, there has always been a very strong, a very marked streak of Christian influence. Now what the Normans also did was fuse royal law with local custom. So as these judges went out, as they left the capital, they went out and they were interpreting the law. They were bringing with them an idea as to what royal law was, but they were expected to fuse it with local custom. Why? If you impose a law from afar that people are unfamiliar with, then there is likely to be misunderstanding. And that in itself will lead to the type of variability that they were trying to avoid. But then there's also the element of resistance. Someone comes in and imposes upon you a new law, there's greater resistance. But if you say here, there's a new approach that we're taking because we're trying to unify the island. However, we will take into consideration cultural variations. Henry II became the king of England in the 12th century. Henry II became the king of England. And he carried forward this approach to the consolidation of power through the centralization of law. What Henry II did was send forward, he established the king's court, and then sends forward throughout to all the different manors judges from the king's court. And what they are meant to do is to hear disputes from across the country. So disputes are lodged with the local magistrate, and then a judge from the king's court arrives and then will adjudicate the matter. Following this, so they would go out, you essentially had what we could refer to as ambulant judges. They would go to these different manors, they resolve disputes, and then they return to the king's court with records of the disputes that they resolved. Then they have a conversation with all the other judges and they try to harmonize, standardize the rules. What the judges were meant to do was effectively to elaborate, to articulate English custom. They're elaborating English custom, and now they go forward across England, dispensing justice based upon English custom. So the aim was ultimately to reach a consensus on similar matters. We're dealing with similar matters, let's reach a consensus as to how we're going to regulate it. Over time, this came to be known, and the Latin phrase that's used is stare decisis. Stare decisis, or precedent. This rule simply means that judges are required to follow 
the rules that have been set out in previous rulings. The doctrine of precedent, as we know it, replaced the system of local custom. But from this, we see that this is where the common law emerges. The common law. So the common law refers to the legal principles, the legal principles and concepts that evolved over many centuries and that were deemed common to all of Britain. Hence the term common law.